Hello everyone, today I want to show you the super fantastic design of the input uh, section uh, that Mosaic has uh, made for the Palette 2 and Palette 2 Pro. One feature that could have been really cool on the Palette 2 is the multi spool mode, where you can load up uh, from two to four spools, and uh, when the first one runs out, it automatically uh, splices in the next one, and when that runs out, it continues on until all four spools are empty. So uh, if you either have to do some really super huge uh, uh, prints, you can can load up a lot of full spools, or what I envision using it mostly for is to, when I have a spool nearing the end, I will just uh, hook that in input 1 and a new spool in input 2, so that uh, uh, I could spend all of my rolls, on, because I often end up with a lot of almost empty rolls, so that they are too small to start to print with. So, so I, that was one of the major selling points when I uh, decided to order mine. Um, but like I said, it could have been a nice feature. Unfortunately, there is uh, several reasons why it uh, does not work at all. The first reason multiple doesn't work is, of course, the buffer system. The, they have a design that requires them to drain the buffer empty periodically, so uh, <laughs> it, it just can't work when you have a, a system where uh, the firmware cannot know when filament will run out, but it has to periodically drain the buffer. Of course, if it runs out right as the buffer is empty, then, then it will fail. And the reason why uh, multi-spool mode has no chance of working on the current hardware is uh, what I'm going to show you now. So here I loaded the two first inputs with the filament and started it in uh, multi-spool without printer mode. In this mode it will pull filament from input 1 until it runs out, then it will splice it together with input 2 and pull from there until it runs out and then it will continue down for all active inputs. So in this case there is only two active inputs. This could for example be used to uh, join two half empty spools together to create one full spool. The white kilometer is the tail end of the screw. Um, usually the end of the filament is uh, rather to hole in the bottom of the screw and then uh, bent so that it is uh, retained. So uh, we will see when the, the end approach that, uh, that it has this uh, kink at the end. The red stub is uh, so that it has something to uh, splice into when the white one runs out and uh, you will see in a second that the length of it is plenty of distance. Now you can see the end approaching as soon as the end uh, crosses the detector switch in the, uh, right behind the input it will cut the white filament and uh, attempt to eject the end piece so that it can splice in the red one. So let's see what happens when, uh, when it crosses the switch. So now it uh, cuts the filament and starts to eject it. I stopped the video there so we can take a look, closer look at uh, where the end of the filament is headed. Uh, it should of course have gone out the hole that it uh, came in through, but uh, as you can see it has uh, found another path now, because the geniuses at uh, Mosaic has designed a huge notch right next to the input. So, uh, of course the filament, if it is bent, will be caught in that notch, and uh, I know it is completely jammed. Listen to how the input drive sounds when it now tries to push the filament out all the way. That was the sound of input drive 1 grinding as it tried to push the jammed filament out. At the same time the input drive 2 pulled the red filament up in until it is now contacting the white filament. Let's unpause the video again now and uh, see what happens when input drive 2 tries to force the red filament in past the white one. That didn't sound too good, so let's try to stop it. Of course the pilot thinks it's more important to finish loading the filament than to listen to me try to stop it. So I have to turn it off instead. Awesome! The first time this happened to me, I wasn't there to catch it right away, and uh, this is what it ended up looking like if it uh, gets to grind for a while. Basically, the grinding heats up the 
filament enough that it will melt and then it will fuse with the other filament and with the channel and generally make a big mess. Uh, when I discovered that it had failed, I just noticed that uh, it, it had uh, failed, uh, failed the print. It had basically stopped feeding filament and snapped the uh, filament. The extruder and the printer had just pulled it straight off. Uh, but this is kind of normal because the, there is also bugs in the firmware that will cause it to just randomly stop feeding filament. So I thought it was that that had happened. And uh, so I just I cancelled the print because it was printing here, and uh, there was uh, quite a bit of uh, fan noise and stuff in the room. So so I didn't even notice that the input drive was still running. So I cancelled the print and uh, left for work. When I came back 15 hours later, the input drive was still grinding. When the pallet is loading filament, it will push it in until it hit the switch just past the cutter and uh, then retract it until it's uh, clear of the other filament paths. And, uh, so that is a known distance and there is a stepper motor driving it so it knows or it could have known perfectly well how many steps is needed uh, to pull the filament into that switch. So you would think that the uh, normal safety procedure there would be to if uh, the input drive has been running for a certain amount of percent longer than what is supposed to be required. It would just give up and, and flag an error. But no, it just kept going and going and going and waiting for the filament to actually reach the switch. Here is the picture of the input section after I've taken the uh, clear acrylic cover off. Uh, I took this picture the time it uh, the first time it jammed and uh, as you can see the the slight bend in the end of the filament is enough to to make it uh, derail and uh, and get stuck in that uh, in that notch. How is it even possible to design a part of the filament path where the end of the filament has to pass with such a notch like that. I mean, haven't the engineers at Mosaic ever tried to load filament into anything? Filament will stick like crazy to anything that isn't as smooth as a mirror. And, and then they designed this input like that. I'm in disbelief. How on earth is it even possible? How, how can you be that stupid and, and still be able to even make a product? I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked that they have been able to produce the palette at all. I mean, the, the kind of mistakes they make is just flabbergasting. I mean, also the, the buffer system, where uh, they they have a mode where the, it can't know when it runs out, and that's kind of buffer that will have to periodically drain itself. When I, when I realized how this was done, I was just shocked. And... Um, and then I discovered this thing. I mean, this is just outrageous. The only part of the design of this thing that uh, is somewhat decent is the aesthetics. I mean, it looks pretty good, but apparently that was the only criteria when they designed it. Because there is so many thoughtless design flaws everywhere in all parts of this machine that I, it, it's just amazing. I mean, it still works, kind of, but all the design flaws make it lose, like, 90% of its potential. So it's just such a shame. 